Chaotic Neutral! Join the team. Hey team, this is McGuire Review, and today we're going to take a look at Pathfinder 2nd Edition. This is the brand new Beastary 3. Now, I do have the original one that's right back here. This is a nice, heavy, chunky book. You know, I would say it, it is the same size here as our original. Uh, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty big book, though. I mean, you're getting a, a fairly big value here with this one. And this one here in particular, I would say, is kind of the GM's dream to all of the cool and fantastical things that could be created in the world of Pathfinder that you can have your players interact with. And I think this one's done really well. Now, it does retail MSRP in the U.S. for $49.99, but again, you can always find a better price on these uh, with different sites, but it does MSRP for $49.99. And on this one, they do have just a kind of a short thing here on the back, some awesome artwork. It says the triple threat. There's over 300 captivating creatures and fantastic foes packed to the pages of this. So there is a number of different things you're going to find here. So what we'll do in this video, if you are unfamiliar with this particular book, this is generally a book for a GM to be able to um, know about all the different creatures that are possible to have your players interact with. And the structure here is going to be very similar, if not identical, to the volumes that have been released already to date. You're going to have an alphabetical listing of all of your monsters here on the front. There's even a better sort of way to, to look at these in the very back of this book. We'll get that here in a second. And then you're going to have a page here that's going to go over the introduction to the book, how to use the book, playing the creatures... There is a creature stat block explanation here that very quickly and cleanly lists how to go through those creatures, what the different statistics mean. And then here you're going to get some uh, some other information on combat power, elite adjustments. So you may want to adjust the level of your creature based on where your characters are. There's some elite adjustments as, as well as weak adjustments, which is a nice section there. Languages, gear... Um, skills, perception, proficiency, all the things you're going to need to know for these different foes and or creatures. Because some of these things are going to be straight up like monsters and creatures you're going to interact with. And some of them are going to be more humanoid um, type type creatures that you can use as NPCs and or uh, enemies that you could interact with that you're going to find in here. So they do play out a little bit differently depending on what they are. Another nice thing I think they add here is the sidebar icon, which again, the structure is exactly the same as what we've seen in the past. So it's got five different icons here. Advice and rules, additional lore, locations, related creatures, and treasure and rewards. So as you're going through the different creatures and foes, you'll have these icons on the page that you can very quickly kind of sidebar, oh, is this like extra lore around this creature that I can use to add in when I'm talking about this thing with my players? Or is this type of creature related to another type of creature that maybe we've seen in prior Beast Aries? So that's really cool to, to have those icons. And, and again, they're in all of these books. So you can kind of link the lineage of different creatures and how they're kind of related through these books which is also really fun as well if you're doing a longer, more sprawling campaign and you've used multiple of these books, you can remind your players that, oh, this is you know some type of offspring from a, a different type of creature. So that's pretty neat. So as we get into the book, and you will see some overhead cam work by uh, our famous bear here as we go through the book, just to give you an overview of some of the artwork, the page design layout, some of these icons and sidebars and what those look like. Uh, and you can kind of follow along as we read through the book. It may not be exact, exact artwork for page of what we're talking about, uh, but you'll be able to get a feel of what's in this book and how it's laid out. Now you will find a um, an index here to the side that goes alphabetically through the different monsters. Maybe you use that uh, if there's a particular monster that you're looking for, which was listed out in alphabetical order in the very beginning of the book. And then there is an appendix. So since we're going through kind of the structure of the book, let's go to the end of the appendix, because I think there's some really cool things in the appendix of this book as well. Um, and we're going to get to this there is a number of dragons and dragon stats that you're going to get in this book. Here's the zombie dragon. It's at the very end. But there is a number of dragons you're going to get in this book as well, which is really cool. 
Here's the ability glossary. So it's going to go through a glossary of all the different abilities you're going to find in the book. If you have specific questions on those abilities, you can come right to your glo glossary of abilities. There's also creature uh, traits as well as uh, creature statuses. So are they chaotic evil, chaotic neutral, uh, or chaotic good, good, lawful, all the different stats that you or statuses and alignments that you have there, they're going to be listed right there, as well as size and a few other traits. Then you're going to get, uh, in alphabetical order, all the different traits that are available uh, in here as well. And this is nice because, let's say, uh, and, and so let me back up a little bit. This is one way that you can actually use this glossary to customize. Just because a monster or a foe or a creature or whatever you want to call it is in this book as is, doesn't mean as a GM you can't customize uh, to your liking. Now, you do want to make sure that you're giving your players the right um, challenge rating and you've modified things properly for the players, so it, it, it's not too easy or too hard. However, you can customize that. So let's say you want to use the zombie um, you know, the, the, let's say you want to use the zombie dragon, but you want to add a certain ability to the zombie dragon that may not be here. You can technically do that by going here to, you know, the different traits and abilities and, and looking one up that you might want to add to that zombie dragon. That's just as an example. You can modify and customize to your heart's desire. That's the beauty of being provided these tool sets. It doesn't have to be just exactly what's in the book. Okay, so that's just something to state there, and as a reason, it makes it really easy to have this all laid out at the end of the book for you like that. Okay, there's also uh, different creatures in the Outer Plains that do perform rituals, uh, and those are listed right here in the book if you want to understand those better or make use of those. Here's all the languages that the creatures in this book can speak, as well as creatures by type, which is nice. So if you're looking for a specific type of creature, like, hey, I want an astral and I want that astral to be something that would interact at a level 7. This makes it really nice because you can just go right to this and it lists out the different levels for that type of creature. And I really like how that's laid out because I can just very quickly look for something that I'm, that I'm, that I'm after. I think my favorite chart in the book, though, is definitely creatures by level. And it's a full chart by level of all the creatures as well as their rarity and the exact page that they're on. So I can very quickly go to this and, and say, okay, I want something that's going to be around that challenge rating of three, uh, or maybe I want to go to four and make it a little bit more of a difficult challenge for my players. Maybe they're threes. So I can just go here and say, okay, four. Well, it starts right here. I got a couple of them and then it goes down through right here. So I can just kind of block that off mentally and say, okay, here's all my creatures that are level four. Well, what type of creature do I want? So I'll go here to the category or type traits and I'll find, well, I'm really looking for something that is a beast. Um, okay, well, how many beasts do I have? So I can look here and see, well, there's really only uh, one that's a beast. And then I can look over here and say, and say ooh, it's a, a Kushtaka. Okay, we got a Kushtaka, level 4, Beast. It's a common, and it's on page 158. So I can go right to page 158, and I have the Beast that I want uh, at the level that I want, and I don't have to really go any deeper than that. It, it really makes it that easy to come up with really cool, unique creatures that my players can interact with just simply by coming to this chart right here. So I absolutely love the way this chart is laid out and designed, uh, this, to me, is kind of just the go-to to figure out what's the right type of thing that I can have interact with my players at any point in time. Now, another thing that I will call out is the level here does go all the way through 24. Now, the max level for a character is obviously 20, but the level does go all the way through a 24 here. So you can create and throw at your players some pretty powerful uh, different beasts and foes within the world of Pathfinder that you have to interact with. Now, obviously, as you get past that level 20 here, these are all going to be rare and unique. So there's actually one unique, and the rest of them are all the Krampuses. The Krampus is unique, and the rest of them are all rare. So that's pretty awesome to see that you have these super high-level things as well that you can deal with 
uh, as a player, and you can throw at your players. Here on the last play page is just a little bit of a promo to the uh, Ancestral Guide, which we've also just done a video on. If you want to know more about the Lost Omens Ancestral Guide, you can find that on the channel and check that out. Outside of that, that is the full structure of the book, everything you need to know about the book. We're going to spend the rest of the video here going through a few of my favorites here in the book uh, as there is just so many cool things that you're going to find in this particular volume. Uh, again, we're going to be hitting some of these things with the miniature cam so you can kind of follow along. I just... It is amazing. Like the artwork in this book is really mind blowing. And the things that you're going to find here are just the uniqueness to what you find in this book is really impressive. And I really just continue to be impressed with the artwork and the character design and the creature design that you find in the world of Pathfinder. It just continues to get better and better and richer and richer. And it's just so unique. There's nothing bland. Uh, or vanilla about it. it it just everything just pops off of the page doesn't matter what it is like literally i could go through this book it would take a long time but literally we could just go through this book and every single page would be awesome in some way and the ring doorbell agrees this was one of the things that i really liked was the animated object You've got animated silverware, animated furnace, animated trebuchet, which is pretty sweet, and an animated colossus. And you'll see there the artwork. You could, you know, you could you could create maybe something that your players go through where they interact with all these different animated type things. And what's cool about it is you can kind of send your players through this level by level. Like your animated silverware is creature level one, so. That's something right out of the gate you can kind of interact with, where your Furnace is 9, your Trebuchet is 13, and your, your Colossus is level 15. <clears throat> so as your players are leveling up over the course of campaign, you can kind of keep going back and throwing those animated objects at them, and maybe there's a storyline around how those animated objects all you know, became animated through some NPC, or there's something in your storyline, your campaign, and that's something you can just kind of create and throw into your campaign, get kind of creative. There's a number of things in this book that are like this, and the next will be the clockwork. Before we hit the clockwork stuff, I definitely have to hit the bone ship, which was another one of my favorites. This is all about the bone ship. It is a creature level 18, and there's ways that you can plot your bone ship in. There's the rules for the bone ship of how the bone ship can interact with other types of vessels when it comes into contact with it, as well as all of the stats of the bone ship. And you will see that there are quite a few different things the bone ship can do and how you would interact with it and how it would interact with the players. There's also a nice little additional lore here about famed but other famed bone ships. And, you know, you can use any of these names or you can use your own to... Uh, be one of the famed bone ships or not. Okay, now we're at the really cool clockwork section, which I thought was really neat. And they did they got these different types of clockwork creatures. You've got the spy clock, the, uh, the clockwork spy. You've got the clockwork soldier. You get the clockwork mage, which I think is a really unique thing, as well as the clockwork dragon. Now, this is the first dragon we're going to get in this in this book. You have the clockwork dragon. You also have the zombie dragon that's in the very back, as well as a number of new dragons that are in the middle of this book we're going to take a look at as well. <clears throat> now, another thing that's really cool about the clockwork is much like the animated series, uh, you've got a number of them that you can throw at your players at different levels. Uh, the clockwork spy, level 1. Then the soldier is level 6, the mage is level 9, and the dragon is level 16. So that's going to offer you, as a GM, the ability to kind of scale those in with your players as well as you're going through your campaign. And I love the clockwork. This is definitely one that I want to work into something where, you know, uh, players can interact with these different types of clockwork beasts over the course of the campaign. And maybe there's some... You know, I would probably have something behind the scenes that's that's working all of these clockworks, and maybe they go evil, and you got to interact with them and bring them back. I don't know. There's all kinds of funny, fun things you could you could actually do with this. As we move on, ah, and the artwork is just 
uh, this, the artwork is just so awesome. Like every page I go through, I just want to stop. But there's there's certain ones that I want to get to in this video just to, to call out because I thought it was really oh look at these beasts they are nuts. Okay, the div ah oh, these are so so cool. Actually, let's stop on the div for a second because this was another uh, part that I thought was just amazing. We're gonna hit the dragons here in a minute. Oh, the divs are so, so cool. The artwork is just nuts. So awesome. Okay, now we're at the dragons. There's a number of dragons you're going to get. The imperial dragons. You're going to get a forest dragon. And for each one of these, you're going to get the young, the adult, uh, as well as the ancient. So you got the forest. You've got the sea. The three of those. Okay, we got the sky dragon. And then we have the Southern Dragon, and that's going to end us for... No, it's not. Uh, we've got the Underworld Dragon. That's the last one. And this Underworld Dragon just looks so deadly. It's a, it's a level 16 creature, so it's not like it's out of control. The Southern Dragon here is a level 20, so I believe that is our highest out of the dragons. Uh, I do believe that it is the highest, yes. Yeah. So that, that one is the highest one. But this Underworld Dragon just looks so wicked, so deadly. And you've got all of your stats that you're going to need, depending on if you're running into a young, an adult, or an ancient, which is nice as well. You can kind of scale those over the course of a campaign. And that's our new section for the Dragons. Okay, this is another one I'm going to take a look at really quick, the Gremlin this was one that I thought was was uh, was pretty awesome when I when I saw the saw the creature like oh sweet they have gremlins they're pretty awesome there there's a different um, type there, there's a few different types that are available here to you that you know have a little bit of different abilities and strengths some of them are creature negative ones so they are just like very very simple like creatures that you could interact with uh, this one's a negative one negative one this one's a one. Uh, and that's all you're going to find. So these are very, very simplistic creatures that you would interact with. You could even use these as somewhat of NPCs, and then depending on how the the characters react to them, then you 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 know you could you could actually have them go into some kind of combat or or have this actually do something um, to to the group uh, because they do have a number of different uh, abilities that they could do. Putrid vomit. Oh man, that's brutal. All right, moving on from the Gremlins. You're never gonna hold me down. Never gonna make a hurt. Got to stop here on the uh, the old Kappa, which is kind of like a, a turtle type uh, creature, a turtle type creature here, and they're known for playing pranks on unsuspecting travelers. So if you ever want to play a good prank on on your travelers, you can have them interact with a Kappa, which would be pretty cool. The Kirin here is also very neat. This is the artwork on this one really drew me in. Um, it, it's just amazing. The artwork on this Kirin here is just absolutely amazing. It, it just looks so so cool. Such an awesome creature there. It's a creature level seven. There is a number of different animals you'll find in here. There is uh, a larger type of polar bear you'll find. You've got some Kitsune type stuff as well that's in here to interact with uh with that heritage there is oh there's our krampus uh the old krampus which is uh this is creature level 21 this thing is nuts you do not want to mess with a krampus <clears throat> you'll also find some things in this book that are based on what we saw in our most recent um ancestral guide uh, there, you know, there's some information on leshies here, some different types of leshies, and you probably could even use some of this with your character creation as well. But if you were to interact with some different types of leshies, there's a cactus leshy, a seaweed leshy, the awesome artwork and what those leshies are going to be able to do. I just love leshies. What a cool, uh, what a cool ancestry. And you can you can play a leshy like as a character. You can be a leshy, which is pretty awesome. Got to give a shout out for the old Mobogos. These are pretty cool. Creature level 10. Uh, there's some interesting lore on this one. They're the children of Gogunta. The Bogos of Galarian believe Mobogos to have hatched from the first 
clutch of eggs laid by their demon goddess Go Gunta following her awakening at the dawn of creation. There's a little bit more there as well, but this is a very unique creature, the Mobogo, uh, because of the lore and kind of the background. It's also just a really interesting looking little creature. Uh, and they have a number of uh, different things that they can do as well. Tongue grab, swamp stride, swallow hole, tongue reposition. I mean, it's there's a, it's got a lot of abilities they can do with its tongue, so you kind of have to watch out from a ranged perspective. Uh, you can't get too close uh, or it's going to nail you with that tongue, so you got to be really quick and agile kind of around the the deadly Amobo go. So I just, I thought that was a really unique character and had a really interesting background as well. Love the Mycelloid. What's awesome. Ah, such awesome artwork there. Don't want to get hit by that spore domination or get a case of purple pox. That'd mess you up. Because a giant porcupine and we're going to win a hard mirror turn. Oh, God. Another one I thought was really cool here was the Spirit Guide, where you're going to get the Cunning Fox as well as the Feathered Bear. I was really excited about the Feathered Bear. And again, these spirits here can be summoned based on what character you are. It isn't just something that you have to actually interact with and fight. Um, these are things that actually can be bonded with. As You could have spirit animals uh, in Pathfinder, as well as physical animals, you can actually have a spirit animal. Um, and these are two here, the Cunning Fox and the Feathered Bear. The Feathered Bear is super awesome. Um, if I played a druid or some type of character that was able to do this, I would definitely have a spirit animal. I think that's such a neat uh, concept in any tabletop RPG. But you do get the Feathered Bear and the Cunning Fox here, which are awesome. Um, there's some new stuff here with sprites as well as we saw with leshies. Sprite is another heritage you can actually play if you want to. Uh, and there's some more information here on a few different types of sprites. Ooh, I love this one here. The Draxy. How awesome is that with all the colors and just, I mean, it's just, it really is amazing. Like the artwork of the squirrel, the artwork is so cool throughout the entire book. I'm really impressed with what they're doing over at Paizo um, and the depth they're putting into these books and the artwork and the creatures. And the last one we're going to hit here outside of, uh, there is one more dragon that's in the book and it is the Worm Wrath which is right here, level 17 creature. It looks pretty deadly as well. I want to say it gives you a feel of kind of one of those zombie-type dragons or the underworld-type dragon, uh, but but it is different. It has um, a number of things that it does, and it's pretty deadly. It's more necrotic. It's got draining life, dr uh, draconic frenzy, divine dispelling. So it's, it's more necrotic-type. A dragon that you would be fighting. Uh, there is an elder one as well, uh, which will go all the way to a level 23. So uh, this this particular dragon here is very deadly. But I will leave us with the wear creatures. I thought that was another cool one, where you got a uh, different type of wear creatures. So you got the wear bat, and you got the wear crocodile, which. I don't know that I've ever actually seen a were crocodile before, a were bat, sure, were wolf, were bear, all of those more standards. But I don't know that I've ever actually seen a were crocodile before. So I thought that was a really, really cool one. I loved the artwork as well, almost giving it kind of this pirate type uh, clothing and outfit uh, as that crocodile takes humanoid form. So very awesome there on the were creatures. I uh, thought that was a, a really cool way to kind of end out the book. And that team is the brand new Beastary 3. I know that it's probably been a little bit longer of a video, but I like doing the videos on these books and just letting you know from a GM perspective what you're up for actually getting. And, you know, if you're a player and this isn't necessarily something you would buy, uh, sometimes players do buy these to, to read up on the creatures that they might interact with, but... I believe these are primarily for the GMs to create those worlds and to create those interactions for their players. So hopefully you've enjoyed this, whether you are a player or a GM. 
you'll find what you need in the brand new Pathfinder 2nd Edition from Paizo Beastary 3. Check it out. Hit that like. Click the subscribe below to join the team. Keep rolling them, Chris. This has been the McGuire Review, and we'll see you next time.